I had always wanted to go camping in Wyoming, the best state in America for camping. I had heard so many stories about the beautiful scenery, the abundant wildlife, and the thrilling adventures. I decided to book a campsite at Wilson State Park, a public recreation area on the south shore of Wilson Lake. It was supposed to be a peaceful and relaxing getaway, but it turned out to be the most terrifying experience of my life. I arrived at the park in the afternoon and set up my tent at a secluded spot near the lake. The campsite was spacious and had a fire ring, a picnic table, and a water spigot. I admired the view of the lake and the surrounding hills, feeling excited for the night ahead. I planned to make a campfire, roast some marshmallows, and enjoy the starry sky. As the sun began to set, I gathered some firewood and started a fire. I put a pot of water on the fire to make some coffee and sat down on a log. I felt a slight breeze on my face and heard the gentle waves of the lake. I smiled, thinking how lucky I was to be here. Suddenly, I heard a loud splash from the lake. I looked up and saw a huge fish jumping out of the water and landing back with a thud. I was amazed by the sight and wondered what kind of fish it was. I grabbed my phone and tried to take a picture, but it was too dark to see anything. I shrugged and put my phone away, thinking I would try again in the morning. I poured myself a cup of coffee and sipped it slowly, feeling the warmth in my throat. I reached for a bag of marshmallows and a stick, ready to roast some. I stabbed a marshmallow with the stick and held it over the fire, watching it turn golden and gooey. I was about to take a bite when I heard another splash from the lake, louder than before. I looked up again and saw another fish jumping out of the water, but this time it was bigger and closer to the shore. It looked like a shark with a long, sleek body and a fin on its back. It opened its mouth and revealed rows of sharp teeth, snapping at the air. It landed back in the water with a loud splash, sending ripples across the lake. I dropped my marshmallow and gasped, feeling a surge of fear. I couldn't believe what I had just seen. Was that a shark in the lake? How was that possible? I grabbed my phone and turned on the flashlight, hoping to get a better look. I pointed the light at the lake, scanning the surface for any sign of the fish. I saw nothing but calm water, reflecting the moonlight. I wondered if I had imagined the whole thing, or if it was some kind of prank. I shook my head, trying to calm myself down. I told myself it was probably just a big catfish or a sturgeon, nothing to be afraid of. I decided to ignore it and go back to my campfire. I picked up my marshmallow and ate it trying to enjoy the sweetness. I roasted another one and ate it too, feeling a bit better. I finished my coffee and decided to call it a night. I put out the fire and crawled into my tent, zipping it up. I lay down on my sleeping bag and closed my eyes, hoping to fall asleep soon. I was drifting off when I heard another splash from the lake, louder and closer than ever. I jolted awake and sat up, feeling a wave of panic. I grabbed my phone and turned on the flashlight, pointing it at the lake. I saw a huge shadow moving in the water, heading towards the shore. It was the fish, and it was coming for me. I screamed and scrambled out of my tent, running towards my car. I threw my stuff in the back seat and jumped in the driver's seat, slamming the door. I started the engine and turned on the headlights, ready to get out of there. I looked at the lake and saw the fish emerge from the water landing on the shore with a thud. It was a shark, and it was bigger than my car. It had a gray, scaly skin and a fin on its back. It opened its mouth and roared, showing its teeth. It looked at me with its black, soulless eyes, and charged at me. I stepped on the gas and drove away, as fast as I could. I heard the shark slam into my car, denting the metal and cracking the glass. I felt the car shake and swerve, but I kept going. I drove out of the park and onto the highway, leaving the shark behind. I didn't stop until I reached the nearest town, where I pulled over and called the police. They didn't believe me at first, but they agreed to send a patrol car to check the park. They called me back an hour later and told me they had found my campsite, destroyed by the shark. They said they had also found the shark, dead on the shore. They said it had a bullet wound in its head, and a tag on its fin that said, property of the U.S. Navy. They said they had no idea how the shark had ended up in the lake, or why it had attacked me. 
They said they were investigating the matter and would keep me updated. They said they were sorry for what had happened and hoped I was okay. I thanked them and hung up, feeling numb and confused. I wondered who had shot the shark, and why. I wondered what the US Navy had to do with it, and what they were hiding. I wondered if there were more sharks in the lake, or in other lakes. I wondered if I would ever feel safe again. I decided to never go camping in Wyoming, or anywhere else, ever again. I always loved camping, especially in the summer when the weather was nice and the nights were clear. I decided to take a solo trip to Wyoming, which was ranked as the best state for camping by some website. I wanted to explore the wilderness and enjoy some peace and quiet. I found a campsite near the Grand Teton National Park, which had stunning views of the mountains and the lake. The campsite was spacious and well-maintained, with fire pits, picnic tables, and restrooms. I set up my tent, cooked some dinner, and watched the sunset. It was a perfect evening. I crawled into my sleeping bag and listened to the sounds of nature. I heard crickets, owls, and the occasional rustle of leaves. I felt relaxed and happy. I drifted off to sleep, dreaming of the next day's adventures. I woke up in the middle of the night, feeling a cold breeze on my face. I realized that my tent flap was open. I must have forgotten to zip it up. I reached for the zipper, but before I could close it, I saw something that made my blood run cold. There was a man standing outside my tent, staring at me. He was tall and thin, with long, greasy hair and a scruffy beard. He wore a dirty coat and jeans, and had a backpack slung over his shoulder. He looked like a drifter or a hitchhiker. But what scared me the most was his eyes. They were wide and wild and gleamed with a sinister light. He smiled at me, showing his yellow teeth. He said in a raspy voice, Hello there, camper. I've been watching you for a while. You look so cozy and warm in there. Mind if I join you? I was paralyzed with fear. I couldn't scream or move. I felt like a deer in the headlights. He took a step closer, reaching for the tent flap. I knew he was going to hurt me, or worse. I wished I had a weapon, or a phone, or anything to defend myself. But I had nothing. I was alone and helpless. He was about to enter my tent, when I heard a loud roar from behind him. He turned around, and I saw a huge brown bear charging at him. The bear was angry and hungry, and saw the man as an intruder and a meal. The man had no time to react. The bear pounced on him, knocking him to the ground. I heard him scream and then a crunch, and then silence. The bear had saved me, but it was still a threat. I didn't know if it would come after me next. I grabbed my backpack, which had my keys and wallet, and ran out of the tent. I didn't look back. I ran to my car, which was parked nearby, and drove away as fast as I could. I didn't stop until I reached the nearest town, where I called the police and reported what happened. They said they would send a ranger to check on the campsite and the bear. They asked me if I was okay, and if I needed any medical attention. I said I was fine, physically, but mentally, I was traumatized. I decided to cut my trip short and go home. I never wanted to go camping again. I had always wanted to go camping in Wyoming the best state in America for camping. I had heard so much about the natural beauty, the wildlife, and the free campsites. So when I got a chance to take a week off from work, I packed my car with my tent, sleeping bag, and some supplies, and hit the road. I drove for hours, enjoying the scenery and the music on the radio. I was looking for a place to camp for the night, when I saw a sign that said, Elk Mountain Campground. It sounded perfect so I followed the dirt road that led to it. The campground was huge, with dozens of sites spread over a grassy meadow surrounded by pine trees. There was a small lake nearby, and a wooden sign that said, Welcome to Elk Mountain Campground. Free camping. No reservations. No services. Enjoy your stay. I drove around until I found a spot that looked nice and secluded, near the edge of the forest. 
I parked my car, got out, and set up my tent. It was getting dark, so I decided to make a fire and cook some dinner. I gathered some wood from the ground and lit a match. The fire crackled and warmed me up. I opened a can of beans and put it on a metal grate over the flames. I sat on a log and watched the stars come out. It was so peaceful and quiet. I felt happy and relaxed. I ate my beans and then decided to go for a walk around the lake. I grabbed a flashlight and left my campsite. The moon was bright and I could see the reflection of the water. I walked along the shore, listening to the sound of the waves and the crickets. I felt a breeze on my face and smelled the fresh air. I thought to myself, this is the life. I was about halfway around the lake when I heard a loud splash. I turned around and saw something moving in the water. It looked like a large, dark shape with a long neck and a small head. It was swimming towards me fast. I felt a surge of fear and realized it was some kind of animal. A monster. I dropped my flashlight and ran. I ran as fast as I could back to my campsite. I heard the creature behind me splashing and roaring. It sounded angry and hungry. I prayed that it wouldn't catch me. I reached my car and fumbled with the keys. I got in and slammed the door. I started the engine and drove away. I didn't look back. I drove all night until I reached the nearest town. I never went camping again. I always loved hiking alone. It gave me a sense of freedom and adventure, a chance to escape from the noise and stress of the city. That's why I decided to hike the Crag Crest Trail in Colorado, one of the best states for hiking. It was a 10-mile loop that traversed the Grand Mesa, offering spectacular views of the surrounding mountains and lakes. I had read that it was a moderately challenging trail, but nothing I couldn't handle. I packed my backpack with water, snacks, a map, a compass, a flashlight, and a first aid kit. I also brought my phone, but I knew there was no signal in the area. I was ready for a day of solitude and scenery. I started the hike early in the morning, hoping to finish by sunset. The trail began at a parking lot near the Crag Crest campground. I signed the trail register and headed into the woods. The first part of the trail was easy and pleasant following a creek and passing through aspen and spruce forests. I saw some deer and squirrels along the way, but no other hikers. I enjoyed the peace and quiet, listening to the birds and the breeze. I felt happy and relaxed. After about three miles, the trail began to climb steeply. I reached the crest of the mesa, where the trees gave way to open meadows and rocky outcrops. The views were amazing. I could see for miles in every direction, the blue sky contrasting with the green and brown landscape. I took some pictures and admired the scenery. I felt a sense of accomplishment and awe. I continued along the crest, following the trail markers and cairns. The trail became more narrow and exposed, with sheer drops on both sides. I had to be careful not to slip or trip on the loose rocks. I was not afraid of heights, but I felt a bit nervous and exhilarated. I felt a rush of adrenaline and excitement. I reached the halfway point of the loop, where the trail descended from the crest and joined a dirt road. I checked my map and saw that I had two options. I could either follow the road back to the parking lot, or I could take a side trail that looped around the eastern side of the mesa, rejoining the crest trail later. I decided to take the side trail, thinking it would be more interesting and scenic. I turned left and followed the sign that said, East Bench Trail. The side trail was less maintained and more rugged than the Crest Trail. It wound through dense forests and wetlands, crossing streams and bogs. I had to watch my step and avoid the mud and water. I saw some signs of wildlife, such as tracks, scat, and bones. I wondered what kind of animals lived in the area. I hoped to see some, but not too close. I walked for about two hours, feeling a bit tired and hungry. I checked my map and saw that I was close to the point where the side trail met the crest trail again. I decided to take a break and eat some snacks. I found a nice spot near a pond, where I could sit on a log and enjoy the view. I took off my backpack and opened it. 
I grabbed a granola bar and a bottle of water. I ate and drank, feeling refreshed and energized. I looked around and noticed something strange. There was a tent near the edge of the pond, about fifty feet away from me. It was a small, green, dome-shaped tent, with a zippered door and a mesh window. It looked old and dirty, like it had been there for a long time. I wondered who owned it and why they left it there. I felt curious and intrigued. I decided to check it out. I put my backpack back on and walked towards the tent. As I got closer, I smelled something foul. It was a rotten, decaying smell, like something dead. I felt a wave of nausea and disgust. I wondered what was inside the tent. I felt scared and anxious. I reached the tent and looked inside. I wish I hadn't. There was a body in the tent, lying on a sleeping bag. It was a man, or what was left of him. He was covered in blood and maggots, his flesh torn and eaten by animals. His eyes were wide open, staring at nothing. His mouth was open, too, as if he had died screaming. He had a large wound on his chest, where his heart had been ripped out. I felt a surge of horror and shock. I screamed and ran away from the tent. I ran as fast as I could, not caring where I was going. I just wanted to get away from that gruesome sight. I ran until I tripped on a root and fell to the ground. I hit my head on a rock and blacked out. I don't know how long I was unconscious. When I woke up, it was dark. I felt a sharp pain in my head and a warm wetness on my face. I touched my forehead and felt blood. I groaned and tried to get up. I was dizzy and confused. I looked around and saw nothing but shadows and shapes. I had no idea where I was or how to get back to the trail. I felt a surge of panic and despair. I reached for my backpack, hoping to find my flashlight and my phone. But my backpack was gone. Someone or something had taken it while I was out. I felt a surge of anger and fear. I was alone, injured, and lost in the woods, with no supplies or help. I felt doomed and hopeless. I heard a noise behind me, a low growl. I turned around and saw a pair of glowing eyes in the dark. They were yellow and fierce, like a predator's eyes. They belonged to a large, black creature standing on its hind legs. It had long, sharp claws and teeth, and a thick, shaggy fur. It looked at me with hunger and malice. It looked like it wanted to kill me and eat me, like it had done to the man in the tent. I felt a surge of terror and dread. I screamed and ran, but for some reason the thing didn't ran after me. But I kept running for about five minutes, and then kept trying to find the trail after that, and thankfully after about twenty minutes I found the trail, and then followed it back. I had always wanted to hike the Kasugi Ridge Trail in Alaska, ever since I saw the pictures of the stunning views of the Alaska Range and Denali. I decided to take a week off from work and fly to Anchorage, where I rented a car and drove to the trailhead. I planned to hike the 27-mile trail in three days, camping at designated sites along the way. I had done my research and packed all the necessary gear, including a bear spray, a satellite phone, and a GPS tracker. I was confident and excited to embark on this solo adventure. The first day of hiking was amazing. The weather was clear and sunny, and the trail was well marked and maintained. I saw a few other hikers on the way, but mostly I had the trail to myself. I enjoyed the solitude and the scenery, feeling a sense of awe and gratitude. I reached the first campsite by late afternoon, set up my tent, and cooked a simple meal. I watched the sunset over the mountains, feeling peaceful and happy. I crawled into my sleeping bag and fell asleep to the sound of the wind. The second day of hiking was more challenging. The trail became steeper and rockier, and the weather turned cloudy and windy. I had to cross a few streams and snowfields, which slowed me down. I also started to feel a bit lonely and bored, as I hadn't seen anyone else on the trail since the morning. I tried to keep my spirits up by listening to some music and podcasts on my phone, but the battery was running low. I reached the second campsite by early evening, feeling tired and hungry. I set up my tent, ate a cold snack, and decided to skip the sunset. 
I just wanted to rest and sleep. The third day of hiking was the worst. I woke up to the sound of thunder and rain. I checked my phone and saw that I had no signal and no battery. I checked my GPS tracker and saw that it was also dead. I cursed myself for not bringing a spare battery or a solar charger. I looked at the map and realized that I still had about 10 miles to go to reach the end of the trail. I had no choice but to pack up and start hiking in the rain. The trail was slippery and muddy, and the visibility was poor. I could barely see the trail markers, and I had to rely on my compass and map. I was cold and wet, and I started to shiver. I hoped that the rain would stop soon, or that I would meet someone on the trail who could help me. But I saw no one, and the rain only got worse. I don't know how long I had been hiking when I heard it. A low growl, coming from behind me. I turned around and saw a large, dark shape moving in the bushes. It was a grizzly bear, and it looked hungry and angry. I froze in fear remembering what I had read about how to deal with a bear encounter. I slowly reached for my bear spray, hoping that it would work. I tried to make myself look big and loud, shouting, Hey, bear! and waving my arms. But the bear didn't seem to care. It charged at me, roaring and baring its teeth. I had no time to react. I felt a sharp pain in my leg as the bear bit into it. I screamed and kicked, trying to get away. I sprayed the bear in the face, hoping that it would let go. But it didn't. It dragged me to the ground, clawing and biting at me. I felt blood gushing from my wounds, and I knew I was going to die. I don't know how long the attack lasted. It felt like an eternity. I prayed for a miracle, for someone to save me, for the bear to leave me alone. But none of that happened. The bear kept mauling me, until I lost consciousness. I don't know how I survived. I woke up in a hospital bed, surrounded by doctors and nurses. This was the scariest experience I had while hiking, and I will never forget that day. The day that I hiked the Kasugi Ridge Trail. The day that I met the grizzly bear. The day that I almost died. I had always wanted to visit Wyoming the best state for camping according to some sources online. I loved the idea of exploring the vast wilderness, seeing the majestic mountains, and feeling the fresh air. So when I found a cheap cabin rental online, I didn't hesitate to book it for a week. It was located near Wilson State Park, a scenic area with hiking trails, fishing spots, and wildlife viewing opportunities. The cabin looked cozy and rustic in the photos, and the reviews were mostly positive. I packed my bags, grabbed my camera, and drove to Wyoming. The cabin was easy to find, thanks to the directions provided by the owner. It was a small wooden structure, surrounded by pine trees and a dirt road. It had a porch, a fireplace, a kitchen, a bathroom, and a bedroom. It was simple, but comfortable. I unloaded my car, checked the cabin for any problems, and settled in. I decided to spend the first day relaxing reading, and enjoying the solitude. I lit a fire, made some tea, and curled up on the couch. It was peaceful and quiet, except for the occasional sound of birds or squirrels outside. The next day, I woke up early and decided to go for a hike. I put on my boots, grabbed my backpack, and headed to the park. I followed a trail that led me to a beautiful lake, where I saw some ducks and geese. I took some photos, had a snack, and continued walking. The trail became steeper and more rugged, but I enjoyed the challenge. I reached a viewpoint where I could see the snow-capped peaks of the Grand Tetons. I felt a surge of awe and wonder. I took more photos, breathed in the fresh air, and smiled. This was what I came for. I decided to head back to the cabin as it was getting late. I retraced my steps, feeling tired but happy. I reached the lake and noticed that the ducks and geese were gone. I shrugged, thinking they must have flown away. I crossed a wooden bridge and heard a loud splash. I turned around and saw a huge, dark shape emerge from the water. It looked like a crocodile, but bigger and uglier. It had a long, scaly body, a massive jaw, and yellow eyes. It roared, 
and lunged at me. I screamed and ran. I dropped my backpack and my camera. I didn't care. I just wanted to get away. I ran as fast as I could, hoping to reach the cabin before the creature caught up with me. I heard it crashing through the trees behind me, snapping its jaws and growling. I felt a surge of adrenaline and fear. I reached the dirt road and saw the cabin in the distance. I ran towards it, praying that the door was unlocked. I reached the porch and tried the knob. It was locked. I cursed and looked for a key. I remembered that the owner had told me to look under the mat. I lifted the mat and saw a key. I grabbed it and inserted it into the lock. I turned it and opened the door. I slammed it shut behind me and locked it. I leaned against the door, panting and sweating. I was safe. I looked around the cabin and felt a wave of relief. Everything was as I had left it. The fire was still burning, the tea was still warm, and the couch was still inviting. I walked over to the couch and sat down. I felt exhausted and shaken. I tried to calm myself and rationalize what had happened. Maybe it was a hallucination or a prank. Maybe it was a wild animal or a mutant. Maybe it was a monster. I didn't know and I didn't care. I just wanted to forget about it and go home. I decided to call the owner and tell him what had happened. I reached for my phone and realized that I had left it in my backpack. I cursed and wondered what to do. I looked for a landline, but there was none. I looked for a radio, but there was none. I looked for a weapon, but there was none. I was alone and helpless. I felt a surge of panic and despair. I decided to wait until morning and then drive away. I hoped that the creature would not come back or that it would not be able to break into the cabin. I hoped that I would survive the night. I wrapped myself in a blanket and lay down on the couch. I tried to sleep, but I couldn't. I kept hearing noises outside and imagining the worst. I kept checking the door and the windows. I kept praying and hoping. I don't know how long I stayed awake, but it felt like forever. I finally saw the first rays of sunlight and felt a glimmer of hope. I got up and looked outside. I saw the dirt road and the pine trees. I saw my car and my backpack. I saw my camera and my phone. I saw no sign of the creature. I felt a surge of relief and joy. I grabbed the key and unlocked the door. I opened it and stepped outside. I was free. I walked towards my car, feeling happy and lucky. When I reached my car, I got in and drove away. I had always wanted to go camping in Wyoming, the best state of America for camping. I heard it had amazing scenery, wildlife, and hiking trails. So when I saw an online ad for a cabin rental near a campsite in the Grand Teton National Park, I didn't hesitate to book it. The cabin was supposed to be cozy and rustic, with a fireplace, a kitchenette, and a porch. It was located in a secluded area, surrounded by trees and mountains. The campsite was a short walk away, where I could use the facilities and meet other campers. It sounded like the perfect getaway for a solo traveler like me. I arrived at the cabin on a sunny afternoon, after a long drive from Denver. I was greeted by a friendly park ranger, who gave me the keys and some instructions. He told me to be careful of bears and wolves, and to keep my food in a locked container. He also warned me not to wander off the trails, as the park was vast and easy to get lost in. He said he would check on me the next day, and wished me a good stay. I thanked him and drove to the cabin. It looked exactly like the pictures, except for one thing, there was a padlock on the door. I thought it was strange, but I assumed it was for security reasons. I unlocked the door and entered the cabin. The cabin was small but cozy, with a wooden interior and a stone fireplace. There was a sofa, a table, a chair, and a bookshelf in the living room. The kitchenette had a stove, a sink, a fridge, and some cabinets. The bedroom had a double bed, a dresser, and a closet. The bathroom had a toilet, a sink, and a shower. Everything was clean and tidy, 
except for some dust and cobwebs. I unpacked my bags and settled in. I decided to explore the campsite and the park before it got dark. I grabbed my backpack, my camera, and my map, and locked the cabin behind me. I walked to the campsite, which was about ten minutes away. The campsite was a large clearing, with a fire pit, a picnic table, and a water faucet. There were several tents and RVs parked around the perimeter, but no one was in sight. I guess they were all out hiking or sightseeing. I felt a bit lonely, but I shrugged it off. I was here to enjoy nature, not to socialize. I filled my water bottle at the faucet and checked the map. There were several trails leading from the campsite to different parts of the park. I chose the one that went to a lake, which was about an hour away. I hoped to see some wildlife and take some photos. I followed the trail, which was well marked and easy to follow. The scenery was breathtaking, with towering mountains, lush forests, and clear streams. I saw some deer, squirrels, and birds, but no bears or wolves. I reached the lake, which was a stunning sight. It was a large, blue body of water, reflecting the sky and the mountains. I took some photos and sat on a rock to admire the view. I was about to head back when I heard a loud splash. I turned around and saw something emerge from the water. It was a huge black creature with a long, scaly body, a crocodile-like head, and sharp teeth. It looked like a dinosaur or a dragon. It roared and lunged at me. I screamed and ran. I dropped my backpack, my camera, and my map and sprinted back to the trail. The creature chased me, crashing through the trees and the bushes. It was fast, and it was gaining on me. I could hear its breath, its growls, and its snaps. I reached the campsite and looked for help. But there was still no one around. The tents and the RVs were empty. I wondered where everyone was and why they left their stuff behind. I didn't have time to think. I ran to my car, which was parked near the cabin. I fumbled with the keys and got in. I started the engine and drove away. I looked in the rearview mirror and saw the creature burst out of the woods. It was still after me. It ran across the campsite and onto the road. It was faster than my car. It caught up with me and rammed into the back of my car. I lost control and swerved off the road. I crashed into a tree and blacked out and woke up in a hospital bed. I still don't know what that creature was and what it wanted from me. I always loved camping, especially in the summer. There was something about being in nature, away from the noise and stress of the city, that made me feel alive and free. That's why I decided to go on a solo camping trip to Wilson State Park in Kansas, one of the best states for camping according to some websites. I had read that the park had over 10,000 acres of land, with hiking trails, fishing spots, and scenic views of the Wilson Lake. It sounded like the perfect place to spend a few days relaxing and enjoying the outdoors. I packed my car with all the essentials, a tent, a sleeping bag, a flashlight, a knife, some food and water, and a map of the park. I also brought my camera, hoping to capture some beautiful shots of the lake and the wildlife. I drove for about four hours, listening to some music and podcasts along the way, until I reached the park entrance. I paid the fee and got a brochure with some information and rules. I learned that the park had several campgrounds, but I wanted to find a more secluded spot, away from other campers. I drove around the park, looking for a good place to set up my tent. I found a clearing near the edge of the lake, surrounded by trees and bushes. It looked like a peaceful and private spot, with a nice view of the water. I parked my car and unloaded my gear. I set up my tent and made a fire pit. I decided to go for a hike before it got dark, so I grabbed my camera and my map and headed to the nearest trail. The trail was well marked and easy to follow. It led me through the woods, along the shore of the lake, and up a small hill. I saw some birds, squirrels, and deer along the way. I stopped to take some pictures of the scenery, admiring the colors of the sunset. I felt a sense of calm and happiness, as if I had found my own little paradise. I reached the top of the hill and looked around. 
I could see the whole lake, sparkling in the fading light. I could also see my campsite, a small dot in the distance. I smiled and took a picture of the view. I checked my watch and saw that it was getting late. I decided to head back to my tent before it got too dark to see. I followed the same trail back, but I noticed that the woods were getting darker and quieter. I turned on my flashlight and quickened my pace. I felt a slight chill in the air, and a faint breeze rustled the leaves. I heard some noises in the bushes, but I assumed they were just animals. I tried to ignore them and focus on the trail. I was almost back to my campsite, when I heard a loud snap behind me. I turned around and saw a large branch fall from a tree. I jumped and let out a gasp. I looked up and saw something that made my blood run cold. A large, humanoid creature was perched on the tree, staring at me with glowing red eyes. It had dark fur, long claws, and huge wings. It looked like a cross between a bat and a wolf. It was the most terrifying thing I had ever seen. It let out a screech that pierced my ears and made me drop my camera. It spread its wings and flew towards me. I screamed and ran towards my tent, hoping to find some shelter. I reached my car and fumbled with the keys. I opened the door and threw myself inside. I locked the doors and started the engine. I looked in the rearview mirror and saw the creature land on the roof of my car. It clawed at the metal and glass, trying to get in. I stepped on the gas and drove away, as fast as I could. I didn't care where I was going, as long as I got away from that thing. I drove for what seemed like an eternity, until I saw a sign for a gas station. I pulled over and ran inside. I told the clerk what had happened and asked him to call the police. He looked at me like I was crazy, but he did as I asked. He also gave me a cup of coffee and a blanket. I sat on a chair and waited for the police to arrive. I was shaking and crying, trying to make sense of what I had seen. I wondered if I had imagined it, or if I had stumbled upon some kind of secret experiment gone wrong. I also wondered if anyone would believe me, or if they would think I was insane. The police arrived and took my statement. They asked me a lot of questions, but they didn't seem to take me seriously. They said they would check out the park and my campsite, but they also suggested that I see a doctor. They said it was possible that I had hallucinated, or that I had encountered a bear or a coyote. They said there was no such thing as a flying wolf bat creature. They said I was lucky to be alive, but they also implied that I was lying or delusional. They drove me to a nearby motel and told me to get some rest. I always loved camping, especially in the summer. There was something about being in nature, away from the noise and stress of the city, that made me feel alive and free. That's why I decided to take a solo trip to Wyoming, which was ranked as the best state for camping in America. I wanted to explore the vast wilderness, see the majestic mountains, and maybe spot some wildlife. I found a campsite online called Wilson State Park, which looked perfect for my adventure. It was located on the south shore of a large lake, surrounded by rolling hills and forests. It had over 100 campsites, some with electric and water hookups, and others more primitive. It also had amenities like showers, restrooms, picnic tables, fire rings, and a boat ramp. I booked a primitive site for three nights, packed my tent, sleeping bag, stove, food, and other essentials, and hit the road. I arrived at the park in the afternoon, checked in at the office, and drove to my site. It was a nice spot, close to the lake, with a great view of the water and the hills. I set up my tent, unloaded my gear, and decided to take a walk around the park. I saw some other campers, mostly families and couples, enjoying the sunny day. Some were fishing, some were swimming, some were playing games. Everyone seemed friendly and relaxed. I walked along the shore, admiring the scenery. The lake was calm and clear, reflecting the blue sky and the white clouds. The hills were green and lush, dotted with wild flowers. The air was fresh and crisp, with a hint of pine. I felt a surge of happiness and gratitude. This was exactly what I needed. I decided to hike up one of the hills, to get a better view of the park. I followed a trail that led me to the top, 
where I found a wooden bench. I sat down and took in the panorama. It was breathtaking. I could see the whole lake, the other campsites, the office, and the road. I could also see the mountains in the distance, towering over the horizon. I felt like I was on top of the world. I stayed there for a while, enjoying the peace and quiet. I didn't see anyone else on the trail or on the hill. I felt like I had the place to myself. I took out my phone and snapped some pictures, then checked the time. It was almost 6 p.m. I decided to head back to my site, make some dinner, and start a fire. I hiked down the hill, following the same trail. I noticed that the sun was getting lower in the sky, casting long shadows on the ground. The temperature was dropping, too. I quickened my pace, hoping to get back before dark. I didn't want to get lost in the woods. I reached the bottom of the hill and looked for the shore. I expected to see the lake and my sight, but instead I saw more trees. I was confused. Where was the water? Where was my tent? I looked around, trying to find a landmark or a sign or anything that would tell me where I was. But I saw nothing familiar. Just trees and more trees. I felt a surge of panic. How did I get here? Did I take a wrong turn? Did I miss the trail? How could I be so far from the lake? I took out my phone, hoping to use the GPS or call for help. But I had no signal. No bars, no service, nothing. I was alone and lost. I tried to calm myself down. I told myself that I just had to retrace my steps and find the trail. It couldn't be that hard. I had a flashlight and some water and some snacks. I could survive the night if I had to. I just had to stay calm and keep moving. I turned around and started walking back the way I came. I looked for any signs of the trail or any footprints or anything that would indicate that I was on the right path. But I saw nothing. Just trees and more trees. I walked for what seemed like hours, but I didn't get anywhere. I didn't see the lake or the hill or the bench or the office or the road. I didn't see any other campers or any wildlife or any birds. I didn't hear anything either. Just the sound of my own footsteps and my own breathing. I started to feel hopeless. I realized that I was not going to find my way back. But somehow after about 30 minutes I reached the trailhead. This was the scariest experience I ever had in the woods because I almost died. I had always wanted to hike the Sky Pond Trail in Colorado, one of the best hiking trails in the country. It was supposed to be a stunning 8.6 mile round trip, with views of glaciers, waterfalls, and alpine lakes. I decided to go solo, since none of my friends were available or interested. I thought it would be a great way to challenge myself and enjoy nature. I started early in the morning, hoping to beat the crowds and the weather. The trail was well marked and easy to follow, and I soon reached the first attraction, Alberta Falls, a beautiful cascade of water that roared in my ears. I snapped a few photos and continued on, feeling excited and energized. The next stop was the lock, a serene lake surrounded by mountains. I took a break here admiring the reflection of the peaks on the water. I saw a few other hikers, but not too many. I felt like I had the place to myself. I checked my map and saw that I still had about two miles to go to reach Sky Pond, the final destination. I decided to push on, eager to see the famous Lake of Glass and Timberline Falls. The trail got steeper and rockier as I climbed higher. I had to scramble over some boulders and cross some streams. The scenery was amazing, but also intimidating. I felt small and vulnerable in the vast wilderness. I checked my phone and saw that I had no signal. I hoped nothing would go wrong. I finally reached the base of Timberline Falls, a 100-foot waterfall that poured over a cliff. I was amazed by the sight, but also daunted by the challenge. To get to Sky Pond, I had to climb up the side of the waterfall, using a series of ledges and steps. It looked slippery and dangerous, but I was determined to do it. I put away my phone and backpack and started to ascend. It was harder than I expected. 
The water was cold and strong, and the rocks were slick and sharp. I had to use my hands and feet to balance and grip. I felt my heart pounding and my muscles burning. I was scared, but also exhilarated. I was almost there. I reached the top of the waterfall and gasped. In front of me was the lake of glass, a crystal clear pool that reflected the sky and the mountains. It was stunning, but also eerie. There was no sound, no movement, no life. It was like a frozen mirror. I felt a chill run down my spine. I walked around the lake, looking for a spot to rest and enjoy the view. I noticed that there were no other hikers around. I wondered where they were. I felt a sudden surge of loneliness and anxiety. I wished I had someone with me. I found a flat rock near the edge of the lake and sat down. I took out my phone and tried to turn it on, but it was dead. I cursed myself for not bringing a charger or a power bank. I felt cut off from the world. I looked at my watch and saw that it was already past noon. I realized that I had to hurry back before it got dark or stormy. I got up and grabbed my backpack, ready to leave. But as I turned around, I saw something that made me freeze. On the other side of the lake, there was a figure. A human figure. It was standing still, facing me. It was wearing a dark hooded cloak that covered its face and body. It looked like a grim reaper. I felt a surge of fear and disbelief. Who was that? What was that? How did it get there? Why was it there? I wanted to scream, but I couldn't. I wanted to run, but I couldn't. I was paralyzed. The figure started to move. Slowly, it raised its arm and pointed at me. I felt a cold hand grip my heart. I knew it was a sign. A sign of death. I knew I was doomed. I don't know how long I stood there, staring at the figure. It felt like an eternity. Then I heard a sound. A loud, thunderous sound. I looked up and saw a flash of light, then I quickly looked where the figure was standing, but it wasn't there anymore. I still don't know what that thing was, and what it wanted from me. I always wanted to go camping in the woods, so when I saw an online ad for a cabin rental in Yosemite National Park, I didn't hesitate to book it. The cabin was located in a secluded area, surrounded by tall pine trees and a clear stream. It looked cozy and rustic, with a fireplace, a kitchen, and two bedrooms. I packed my bags and drove to the campsite, eager to enjoy some peace and quiet. The first day was amazing. I hiked along the trails, saw some wildlife, and took some photos. I returned to the cabin in the evening, cooked some dinner, and read a book by the fire. I felt relaxed and happy, away from the stress and noise of the city. I went to bed early, looking forward to another day of adventure. The second day was when things started to go wrong. I woke up to a loud thud outside the cabin. I got up and looked out the window, but I didn't see anything. I shrugged it off and got ready for the day. I decided to explore a different part of the park, so I grabbed my backpack and headed out. As I was walking, I noticed some strange marks on the ground. They looked like claw marks, but bigger than any animal I knew. I followed them for a while, curious and a bit nervous. They led me to a clearing, where I saw something that made my blood run cold. It was a dead deer, torn apart and half-eaten. Its eyes were wide open, and its mouth was twisted in a silent scream. Flies buzzed around the carcass, and a foul smell filled the air. I felt sick and scared, wondering what could have done this. I backed away slowly, hoping not to attract any attention. I turned around and ran back to the cabin, hoping to find some safety. I reached the cabin and locked the door behind me. I tried to calm myself down telling myself that it was probably just a bear or a mountain lion. I decided to call the park ranger and report what I saw, but when I picked up the phone, there was no dial tone. I checked my cell phone, but there was no signal. I felt a surge of panic, realizing that I was cut off from the outside world. I looked around the cabin, searching for something to defend myself with. I found a hunting rifle in a closet, along with some bullets. I loaded the gun and held it in my hands, feeling slightly more confident. 
I decided to stay in the cabin until morning, hoping that whatever was out there would leave me alone. I sat on the couch, trying to distract myself with some music. I turned on the radio, but all I heard was static. I switched the channels, but nothing came through. I gave up and turned it off, feeling more isolated than ever. I looked at the clock and saw that it was only 9 p.m. It was going to be a long night. I tried to sleep, but I couldn't. Every sound made me jump, and every shadow made me paranoid. I kept the rifle close to me, ready to shoot at anything that moved. I prayed for the sun to rise, and for this nightmare to end. Around midnight, I heard another thud outside the cabin. This time, it was louder and closer. I got up and looked out the window, holding the rifle. I saw a dark shape moving in the trees, about twenty feet away from the cabin. It was big and hairy, with glowing red eyes and sharp teeth. It looked like a wolf, but bigger and more muscular. It was the most terrifying thing I ever saw. It saw me too, and it growled. It started to run towards the cabin, breaking the branches and shaking the ground. I aimed the rifle and fired, hoping to hit it. The bullet missed, and the creature kept coming. It reached the cabin and slammed into the door, making it crack. I fired again, but it was too late. The door broke, and the creature entered the cabin. I screamed and ran to the bedroom, hoping to find another way out. I slammed the door behind me and locked it. I heard the creature roar and scratch the door, trying to break it. I looked around the room and saw a window. I ran to it and tried to open it, but it was stuck. I grabbed a chair and smashed the window, breaking the glass. I climbed out of the window, cutting myself on the shards. I landed on the ground, ran towards my car, and got out of there. I still don't know what that creature was. I always wanted to go camping in the woods, so when I saw an online ad for a cabin rental in Yosemite National Park, I didn't hesitate to book it. The cabin was located in a secluded area, surrounded by tall pine trees and a small lake. It looked cozy and rustic, just what I needed to escape from the city life. I arrived at the cabin on a Friday afternoon, after a long drive from Los Angeles. The owner had left the key under the doormat, and a note on the door that said, Welcome to your home away from home. Enjoy your stay and please respect the wildlife. P.S. Don't forget to lock the door at night. I entered the cabin and was impressed by how spacious and clean it was. There was a living room with a fireplace, a kitchen with a fridge and a stove, a bathroom with a shower and a toilet, and a bedroom with a queen-sized bed and a closet. There was also a small porch with a rocking chair and a view of the lake. I unpacked my bags and decided to explore the area a bit. I put on my hiking boots and grabbed a flashlight, just in case it got dark. I followed a trail that led to the lake and was amazed by how calm and beautiful it was. The water was clear and sparkling, and I could see some fish swimming near the shore. I sat down on a rock and took a deep breath of the fresh air. I felt relaxed and happy. I spent about an hour by the lake, watching the sunset and listening to the sounds of nature. I decided to head back to the cabin before it got too dark. I retraced my steps and soon reached the cabin. I locked the door behind me and turned on the lights. I made myself a sandwich and a cup of tea and sat down on the couch. I turned on the TV and flipped through the channels, but there was nothing interesting on. I decided to read a book instead. I picked up a paperback from the shelf and saw that it was a horror novel. I shrugged and opened it. It was about a group of friends who went to a cabin in the woods and were attacked by a masked killer. I thought it was a bit cliché, but I kept reading anyway. I was so engrossed in the book that I didn't notice the time. I looked at the clock and saw that it was almost midnight. I yawned and decided to call it a night. I turned off the TV and the lights and went to the bedroom. I changed into my pajamas and got into the bed. I put the book on the nightstand and turned off the lamp. I closed my eyes and drifted off to sleep. I don't know how long I slept, but I was awakened by a loud noise. It sounded like someone was banging on the door. I jolted up and looked around. It was pitch black in the room, and I couldn't see anything. 
I reached for the lamp, but it didn't turn on. I realized that the power was out. I felt a surge of fear and grabbed my flashlight. I turned it on and pointed it at the door. The banging continued, louder and faster. I heard a voice, muffled and distorted, saying, Let me in, let me in, let me in. I felt a chill run down my spine. Who was that? What did they want? I got out of the bed and moved towards the door. I looked through the peephole and saw a horrifying sight. There was a man outside, wearing a ski mask and a black hoodie. He had a large knife in his hand, and he was slashing at the door. He looked insane and angry. He saw me looking at him, and he smiled wickedly. He said, I see you, I see you, I see you. I gasped and backed away from the door. I was terrified and panicked. I didn't know what to do. I looked around the room and saw that there was a window behind the bed. I ran to the window and tried to open it, but it was stuck. I pulled harder, but it didn't budge. I cursed and looked for something to break it with. I saw a chair in the corner and grabbed it. I smashed the chair against the window and it shattered. I threw the chair aside and climbed out of the window. I landed on the ground and cut myself on the glass. I ignored the pain and ran towards the woods. I hoped to find help, or at least a place to hide. I ran as fast as I could, but I could hear the man behind me. He had broken down the door and followed me out of the window. He was chasing me, and he was faster than me. He shouted, You can't run, you can't hide, you can't run, you can't hide. I felt a surge of adrenaline and ran faster. I dodged the trees and the rocks, and tried to lose him. I saw a light in the distance, and hoped that it was another cabin or a ranger station. I ran towards the light, and saw that it was a car. It was parked on the side of the road, and the engine was running. I ran to the car, and saw that the driver's door was open. I jumped in the car, and slammed the door. I locked it and looked for the keys. They were in the ignition. I turned them and stepped on the gas. The car sped away, and I breathed a sigh of relief. I had escaped. I drove for a while, until I reached a town. I stopped at a gas station, and got out of the car. I looked at myself in the mirror, and saw that I was covered in blood and dirt. I had cuts and bruises all over my body. I felt a sharp pain in my chest, and realized that I had been stabbed. I didn't notice it before, but the man had managed to stab me in the ribs. I felt dizzy and weak. I collapsed on the ground and lost consciousness. I woke up in a hospital bed, surrounded by doctors and nurses. They told me that I was lucky to be alive. They said that someone had found me at the gas station and called an ambulance. They said that they had stitched up my wound and given me a blood transfusion. They said that I would recover, but I would have a scar. They asked me what had happened, and I told them everything. They looked shocked and sympathetic. They said that they had contacted the police, and that they were looking for the man who attacked me. But they never found him. I had always wanted to go camping in Wyoming, the best state of America for camping. I had heard so many stories about the beautiful scenery, the wildlife, and the adventure. So when I saw an online ad for a cabin rental in Wilson State Park, I didn't hesitate to book it. The cabin was located on the south shore of Wilson Lake, a 9,000-acre reservoir that offered fishing, boating, and swimming. The cabin itself was cozy and rustic, with a fireplace, a kitchen, and two bedrooms. It was surrounded by trees and had a view of the lake. It seemed like the perfect place to relax and enjoy nature. I arrived at the cabin on a Friday afternoon, after a long drive from my home in Colorado. I unpacked my car, checked the cabin for any problems, and settled in. I decided to go for a walk around the lake, to stretch my legs and explore the area. I grabbed my backpack, my camera, and my map and headed out. The weather was sunny and warm, and the lake sparkled in the light. I followed a trail that circled the lake, admiring the views and taking pictures. I saw some birds, squirrels, and deer, but no other people. It was quiet and peaceful, just what I needed. I walked for about an hour, 
until I reached the opposite side of the lake from the cabin. I checked my map and saw that there was another trail that led back to the cabin, through the woods. It was shorter than the lake trail, and I thought it would be nice to see a different scenery. I turned onto the trail and entered the forest. The trail was narrow and winding, and the trees were thick and tall. The sun was blocked by the branches, and the air was cooler and darker. I felt a slight chill, but I shrugged it off. I was enjoying the walk, and I was not afraid of the woods. I walked for another hour, following the trail markers and the map. I expected to see the cabin soon, but I didn't. I started to feel uneasy, wondering if I had taken a wrong turn or missed a sign. I checked my map again and saw that I was on the right track. I decided to keep going, hoping to find the cabin soon. I walked for another half an hour, but still no sign of the cabin. I was getting worried and frustrated. I checked my phone, but there was no signal. I checked my watch and saw that it was getting late. The sun was setting and the woods were getting darker. I started to panic, realizing that I was lost. I tried to calm myself down and think of what to do. I knew that I had to find the cabin before nightfall, or I would be in trouble. I had no flashlight, no tent, no food, no water, and no way to contact anyone. I was alone, in the middle of nowhere, with no idea where I was. I decided to backtrack and follow the trail back to the lake. I thought that maybe I could find someone there, or at least a better signal. I turned around and started to walk back the way I came. But as I walked, I noticed something strange. The trail looked different. It was not the same trail that I had followed before. It was wider and smoother and had no markers. It looked like a road, not a trail. And it was going in a different direction. I stopped and looked around. I was confused and scared. How did this happen? Where was I? How did the trail change? I felt a surge of fear and a sense of dread. I felt like I was in a nightmare and I couldn't wake up. I heard a sound behind me. A low growl, like an animal. I turned and saw a large black shape moving towards me. It was a bear, a huge angry bear. It had seen me and it was hungry. I screamed and ran. I ran as fast as I could, away from the bear, and the road, and the woods. I ran, hoping to find the cabin, or the lake, or anything. I ran until I tripped, and fell, and then everything went blank. But when I woke up, I was completely fine, and was back on the trail. I still don't know why the bear spared me, but for some reason it did. And I'm thankful about it. And I still don't know how I got back to the trail. Maybe someone saved me. I don't know. I always loved camping, especially in the wilderness. There was something about being away from the city, surrounded by nature, that made me feel alive. That's why I decided to go on a solo camping trip in Wyoming, one of the best states for camping according to some websites. I wanted to experience the beauty and solitude of the Rocky Mountains, and maybe catch a glimpse of some wildlife. I packed my car with all the essentials, a tent, a sleeping bag, a stove, some food, water, a flashlight, a knife, and a map. I also brought my camera, hoping to take some amazing photos of the scenery. I drove for hours, following the directions to a campsite near a lake that was recommended by a friend. He said it was a hidden gem, not very crowded, and perfect for fishing and hiking. I arrived at the campsite in the late afternoon and found a spot near the edge of the lake. There were only a few other tents around, and I didn't see anyone outside. I guessed they were either out exploring or inside resting. I set up my tent and then decided to take a walk around the lake before it got dark. I grabbed my camera and headed out, leaving my car and tent behind. The lake was stunning reflecting the colors of the sky and the mountains. I snapped some photos, and then followed a trail that led to a small waterfall. I was amazed by the sound and sight of the water cascading down the rocks. I took more photos, and then sat on a log, enjoying the view. I felt so peaceful and relaxed, I almost forgot about the time. I checked my watch, 
and realized it was getting late. I decided to head back to the campsite and maybe cook some dinner. I got up from the log and turned around. That's when I saw him. He was standing on the other side of the waterfall, staring at me. He was tall and thin, wearing a dirty backpack and a ragged coat. He had long, greasy hair and a scruffy beard. His eyes were dark and hollow, and his mouth was twisted into a grin. He was holding a hatchet in his hand. I felt a surge of fear and wondered who he was and what he wanted. I didn't recognize him from the campsite, and I didn't see any tent or car nearby. He looked like a drifter, or maybe a fugitive. He didn't say anything, he just kept staring and grinning. I tried to act calm and said hello. He didn't respond, he just tilted his head, as if he was amused by my greeting. I asked him if he was camping here, and if he needed any help. He still didn't answer, he just raised his hatchet and pointed it at me. I felt a chill run down my spine and realized he was dangerous. He was probably crazy or high or both. He wanted to hurt me or worse. I had to get away from him fast. I grabbed my camera and ran back to the trail. I hoped he wouldn't follow me or that I could outrun him. I ran as fast as I could, not looking back. I heard him laugh and then footsteps behind me. He was chasing me and he was faster than I thought. I panicked and tried to find a way to escape. I looked for a branch or a rock or anything I could use as a weapon. I didn't find anything and he was getting closer. I reached the end of the trail and saw the lake. I had no choice, I had to swim. I threw my camera on the ground and jumped into the water. I hoped he wouldn't follow me or that he couldn't swim. I swam as fast as I could, heading to the opposite shore. I felt the cold water sting my skin and the air leave my lungs. I prayed he wouldn't catch me or that someone would see me and help me. I looked back and saw him standing on the shore. He was still holding his hatchet, and he was still grinning. He didn't jump into the water, he just watched me swim. He waved his hatchet and shouted something. I couldn't hear what he said, but I guessed it wasn't good. I turned around and kept swimming. I reached the other shore and climbed out of the water. I was shivering and gasping, but I didn't stop. I ran to the nearest tent and yelled for help. I hoped someone was inside and that they would hear me. I reached the tent and opened the flap. I saw two people inside, lying on the ground. They were covered in blood, and they weren't moving. They were dead. I screamed and backed away from the tent. I went back the way I came and thankfully didn't see that man again. I always loved camping, especially in Wyoming, the best state for camping according to some websites. I had heard about a place called Wilson State Park, where there was a beautiful lake and a lot of wildlife. I decided to go there for a weekend, alone, just to enjoy the peace and quiet of nature. I arrived at the park on a Friday afternoon and found a nice spot near the water. The park was not very crowded, and I only saw a few other campers in the distance. I set up my tent, made a fire, and cooked some dinner. The sun was setting, and the sky was painted with orange and purple hues. I felt relaxed and happy. I decided to go for a walk along the shore to stretch my legs and see the stars. The night was clear and cool, and the moon was bright. I could hear the gentle waves and the crickets chirping. I walked for about half an hour until I reached a small pier. I decided to sit there for a while and enjoy the view. As I was sitting on the pier, I noticed something moving in the water. It looked like a large fish, or maybe a turtle. I leaned over the edge, trying to get a better look. Suddenly, I felt a sharp pain in my ankle, as if something had bitten me. I screamed and pulled my leg back, but it was too late. I saw blood dripping from a deep wound, and a dark shape swimming away. I panicked and ran back to my campsite, limping and bleeding. I grabbed my first aid kit and tried to bandage my wound, but it was bleeding too much. I needed to get to a hospital fast. I looked at my phone, but there was no signal. 
I remembered that there was a ranger station a few miles away, on the other side of the park. I decided to get in my car and drive there, hoping that someone would be there to help me. I got in my car and started the engine, but nothing happened. The car was dead. I checked the battery and saw that it had been chewed by some animal. I cursed and got out of the car, feeling dizzy and weak. I looked around and saw that my tent had been torn apart and my food had been scattered. Something had attacked my campsite while I was gone. I realized that I had no choice but to walk to the ranger station, even though it was dark and I was injured. I grabbed a flashlight and a knife and started walking. I followed the road, hoping that it would lead me to safety. I tried to ignore the pain and the blood loss and focus on my goal. As I was walking, I heard a loud roar behind me. I turned around and saw a huge bear running towards me. It had blood on its mouth and claws, and it looked angry and hungry. It was the same animal that had bitten me and attacked my campsite. It had followed me, and now it wanted to finish me off. I ran as fast as I could, and somehow got away from it, and made it to the ranger station safely. 